Hey Houston, we don't have any problems. We're going to learn something that you is probably not completely understood in this world. It has to do with ground water, water in the ground. Now we've been talking about streams and overland water, but there's a lot of water under the ground. So let's let's dive into this topic in more detail now. So I want you to recall something that the most of the water, all right, is in oceans, and then the fresh water's a little bit, and then the fresh water most of it's in glaciers, which we really haven't talked much about because it's just frozen stuff, and then the groundwater. And then what we've really been talking about with streams and all that stuff is this water at the top. Groundwater is a huge percentage of the water. What the heck? What is groundwater? First of all, let's talk about this. It's, there's some crazy facts. 40% of all of our water use is from groundwater. 40% of our irrigation of crops is groundwater. 50% um, of our drinking water is Groundwater in the U.S., by the way. 25% of the water used is groundwater from industrial uses. And overuse of it is a big problem in some areas. So let's, 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 what the heck is groundwater? There's a huge misconception about groundwater that a lot of people have that we want to make sure that you don't have. I mean, misconception is something that people think about groundwater that isn't true about groundwater. And that is groundwater is people, what they think is that it's like a river under the water. All right. There's no river, like it's not like a, a big like channel of water flowing underground. What groundwater is, is it's this. It's wet dirt and rocks. So as water moves its way in, you know, it, it's infiltrated into the soil, this is still filled with dirt and rocks, and it's just wet dirt, wet rocks. And so there's lots of water that is f making its way down. Now we've got a bunch of terms here, aquifer, confining bed. Let's talk about that in just a minute. So interestingly enough, like this is an interesting thing, is that as water infiltrates here, it then fills this table. All right, let's, let's talk about this. Something called the water table. That, that means, that, you know, let me sort of back up. This confining bed would be made up of a rock that's not pervious to water. And so what happens is, is what the water does is it sinks down into the ground and the water table is from here to here. So it's like dry, the water just infiltrates here. So you've got really wet soil from here to here, okay? Now occasionally what you're gonna have is you're gonna have cracks in the confining bed and it's gonna send water further down into another aquifer, and so these are cracks that happen for the water. And so look at the timing here. Water comes here, and then it moves its way to here, to a stream. So not all the water that flows in a stream comes from rain runoff. Some of it comes from it infiltrating and coming into, or exfiltrating, I guess might be the word, coming into the stream, just because it goes to the low spot. And some of it will take days, years, centuries, or millennia, depending on how much it's going to be feeding that, that water. And here we can sometimes, and this is how we, how do we get groundwater and use it? We drill a well and we pump it out. Now, again, it's not like it's a little river or a lake underwater. It's just dirt, wet dirt. I mean, think about going to the beach and you dig a hole at the beach. It starts to fill with water. Why? Because you have wet dirt and then it works. So when you're, when you're digging a well, what happens is you create a space. Now, there, now this is a hole, but now all the wet the soil, the water flows into here, and then we pump it up. All right, so that's what groundwater is. Here's an interesting uh, image from our textbook. Um, this is the water table, the main water table, and it's it's not it's not a straight line. It's relatively straight, but it's flowing down. Actually, comes back up here, and then it's going to be recharged. That's why we have a stream here. Some of it flows out of here and on the top of the earth, but a lot of it's coming from underneath. And this is the unsaturated zone. Here, actually, this is a cool picture. Do you see this? We've got uh, unsaturated, there's holes. You see these holes are where the water lives. And when you're down in the saturated zone, you see you've got holes and they're filled with water, right? Small grains of sand and dirt and clay and silt and all that kind of stuff like that. All right, some key terms, key terms, all right? We have um, the unsaturated zone, that means it doesn't have water saturated with it. And we have the saturated zone, 
which I don't have it down here, but make sure you make a note of the saturated zone where it is now filled. And that is the aquifer. Aquifer is this vast region of water, of dirty, dirty soil, I guess. But that's a untapped resource if you don't, if you want to, to uh, pump it out for a variety of reasons, then you pump it out with a well. All right. This leads us to another interesting definition we want to pop onto. There's things called porosity and permeability. All right. If you have no porous, then the rocks are all joined together. Boom, right? Porous means there's holes where the water can exist. But if they're connected, then this is porous and permeable. Permeable means that it has a way to flow out, right? Where uh, porosity means it's got holes. Does that make sense? Porosity, you have holes or gaps, right? And permeability is it can flow. And so if you're trying to pump water out, you're looking for a permeable, porous place to pull the water out of. By the way, this is the same thing for oil. Oil is a liquid too. It's the same ball game. Is what you want to do is you want to get, uh, you want to find oil that's in a porous and a permeable area. And actually, one of the big things that's happening now is called oil fracking. And what they do is they find places that are porous and non-permeable, and then they pump additional chemicals, mostly water, in there. They crack frack the rock, and they turn it from porous non-permeable into porous permeable. And now you can extract the oil from the ground. And I've been using this term called an aquifer. Aquifers is this, uh, is this huge, vast storage of water underneath the earth uh, in certain places. Not in every place has aquifers. Um, and then we've got this water table. Actually, an interesting thing about the water table, that's, that's the highest level that the water is. I, you know, as many of you know, I moved here from Chicago. And in Chicago, everyone's got a basement. Why do they have a basement? Well, because it's, it's like cheap area and land for your house. And here in Houston, no one has a basement. Why not? It's because our water table is too high. If you were to build a basement, they would all flood because the water table is just below the surface of, of Houston. And so all your basements would flood. All right. Basements in, in Illinois, Chicago area do flood occasionally, but only when there's like big storms and stuff like that. So, uh, yeah. So make sure you understand, <laughs> make sure you understand these terms, aquifer, uh, unconfined aquifer, confined, because this is now this is a, some kind of a bedrock, um, et cetera, et cetera. Understand that this comes up here. So uh, Houston, lots of cool stuff about groundwater. Make sure you understand it's just dirty soil underneath the earth. We'll see you in class.